also um, the the question, and I've, it's a bit of a connected question. So, so I was wondering, and you answered that whether you had the experience of having these actors involved earlier in the planning phase, and and what would change. But John is also asking because, of course, the the, the tension is between finding a, a balance. Um, between the short-term gains of the business versus the long-term investment by business? Yeah. I think um, the question is how we can align the um, motivation, short-term or long-term, of the business people with the long-term vision of the planner. So that's the big question. Um, but I think the uh, first, the authority uh, play a key role here to uh, follow the vision set by strategic planning. So they have to create the um, more um, package because the solution, the the, uh, the planning objective is not only what we want. But also, what we sh uh, what should be done to include more appropriate stakeholder involved. That the the very important uh, things. So that means our solution that mean that that not only uh, what should be done, but also how can be done. And the how is even more important uh, than uh, the what. So I think um, there is a many example of uh, how to do it. For example, to uh, in Vietnam, many provinces try to attract investment uh, from uh, the uh, FDI, uh, foreign direct investment, into, into their province. So they uh, try to um, improve their governance system uh, to be more transparency, more effective. Or they can uh, build uh, some uh, vital infrastructure, a highway or port, so that uh, they can help the business to reduce uh, the cost. Or they can uh, prepare the uh, human capital to um, provide for the investor. So a lot of things can be done toward this, but the um, final destination of such plan this old way is how to attract the business people into the planning so depend on the situation you can think a lot of uh, you know you have initiative and you have a uh, policy you have uh, um, incentive uh, methods so that uh, you can do it Okay, thank you. I think that that's uh, also a very, um, um, let's say, hot debate also, for example, now in Europe with the Green Deal, where we're really at the phase to try to to involve businesses to transform the economy of sorts. No? And, and I think it's also a question of what type of of business you, you want to involve in the longer term uh, strategy, yeah. because of course, some of them do have a very long term investment yeah. interest also. In fact, uh, you know, in the planning phase, we have uh, really some actor uh, who play a, a role of leader, according to the motor map. But if you try to involve the uh, people, and uh, like uh, the business people at the very beginning, you may fail because they don't they don't care what you are doing. What they care is the, about the plan. And if they see any opportunity in your plan, so they react. That's the trigger. So any, anyhow, you have to, uh, to be patient, but you have to think of the dynamic of motor. It's not, not be the same every time. If the objective change, if the actor changes uh, because of a new trigger is coming, so you have to reanalyze the situation again. The motor mapping is 
it's maybe not uh, what uh, have been done during the planning phase. Okay, thank you very much, Sophie. Uh, and um, Nora uh, and and Leon, I think it would be it would be beneficial to come back to the to the role of private actors and entrepreneurs in our later discussion because I think that's a really interesting facet on um, how do we get private actors in, interested in what we do and also how does government then facilitate that process to be long term versus uh, yeah making you know a quick dollar I think that's such an interesting mm -hmm. concept for, for us to try to look at yeah yeah, good so um, the conclusion is that if we uh, manage to include also the uh, implementer, the business people at the very beginning phase of the stress planning, that may help, have a lot. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. So um, indeed, let's let's pick this up in the in the discussion. Um, do we have time for one last question? I, I think so. No? So uh, Mong Mong is asking how you measured or how do we know the better abilities by sector? Yeah. <clears throat> Any idea about this? Yeah, I think um, it depends on uh, the nature of the objective. Because uh, anyhow, we, uh, we have the uh, only four categories of uh, ability and depending on the phase, depending on the nature of uh, the problem. So you, I think it's not uh, difficult to find out which one is relevant and which one is um, uh, in a higher priority. For example, in the uh, uh, agriculture and maybe different from the industry sector. Yeah, because in industry sector that uh, require m more uh, ability in <clears throat> market. Yeah, that means you have to uh, understand not only uh, about the financial uh, matter, but also the how to how to produce, how to organize the operation and a lot of skills that you require. And, uh, but for agriculture, uh, if you are a farmer, that might be easier. You can just produce it and then that's all. What you require is uh, very simple. So I think that uh, uh, it's case by case. Yeah, it's not easy to find out. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Fee. Um, this brings us to uh, the, the next talk. So uh, we're going to now discuss an, another aspect of extending Malta, uh, namely monitoring and evaluation. And it's uh, our colleague Jaap Evers who will be talking about it. Jaap is working at IHG Delft and his research and teaching focuses on water environmental policy development and implementation, as well as policy transfers. And so his talk is about uh, the monitoring and evaluation and whether MOTA indicators can also be part of that monitoring and evaluation. Yeah, the floor is yours. Uh, Nora, and um, thank you everybody for uh, having joined us here uh, today. Um, I hope you can see my screen. I assume that's a yes. Yes, yes. Okay, you thank see. you. Um, and um, also thank you, uh, Holong Fee, for uh, your interesting presentation. And um, I think you have made some remarks during your presentation that uh, are very uh, useful uh, also for me in, uh, in this presentation, because I think I can uh, build upon what you have presented. Um, for now, as a starting question, um, I think it would be uh, nice for me at least to ask you, uh, what are you using your evaluations for? I'll just start thinking a little bit about it. So what do, do evaluations mean to you and when are you using them? And well, do you find it meaningful, of course? Um, let me first uh, go to 
what I'm going to present to you. Um, and the content of my presentation is first that I'm going to uh, share a little uh, story about what is currently uh, going on in the Netherlands. And then, well, basically, we address in this um, in this presentation the question about what is evaluation, when are we evaluating, who is evaluating, and how, of course, is the MOTA framework helping us in um, evaluating and improving our uh, projects and plans. Well, currently, there is a big um, parliamentary research commission um, uh, going on, and it has as the topic... Um, uh, the implementation agencies and one of the um, uh, issues that started this parliamentary research commission is the, the Dutch tax office child care benefits scandal in um, which basically the tax office um, uh, unrightly um, suspected all kinds of parents uh, from fraudulent practices um, in relation to uh, receiving their childcare benefit to support them for uh, having their kids at uh, the daycare. Um, and this especially uh, had impacted on um, citizens of lower socioeconomic uh, classes. And the reason why the tax office had um, addressing those kinds of groups of people um, uh, as being fraudulent in their practices to receiving childcare benefit, uh, again related to the automatization of the IT um, uh, uh, softwares in in the, the Dutch tax office, um, which basically um, already hinted towards uh, that in those class of people there are more fraudulent practices, but the algorithm well, got too excited and uh, pointed out too many people as uh, fraudulent and it uh, had a very dramatic impact on those people. Um, on the right side of um, this uh, slide, you can see um, a, a, an article from the, the Volkskrant newspaper. And basically it asks here itself, why are citizens and civ um, civil servants so often lost and it addresses and also in this commission this research commission it addresses this question um, why are implementing agencies civil servants not able to implement what is, what is the plan what is developed by the policy makers but also why are so many citizens not able to adopt those uh, to those uh, policy behaviors. And when I have been um, looking at the interviews eh, or the hearings in this, um, in this commission, um, several elements uh, I did notice. So when we are looking at the, um, the implementation side, the, many of the, 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 the heard people in this hearing mentioned like there is a lack of knowledge and attention by the policy makers, in this case, members of parliament in the Netherlands, but I think we could easily translate it also to policy makers in city councils uh, or whatever, or at uh, state level rather than federal uh, level. So there's a lack of knowledge and attention of policy makers for implementation. So they are making big policies um, and do not very much care or are not really aware of what this means for implementation and if it's even implementable or not by the uh, implementation agencies. And in this case, it relates to the Dutch tax office, for example, but also a program of the Ministry of Infrastructure is part of this uh, whole research and hearing. Um, in the Netherlands, what we also see, but I think this is also a um, international phenomenon, um, is that there are also, uh, under uh, neoliberal ideas as well, is that there is a process of decentralization going on. And um, so what we see in the Netherlands is that um, around this issue, but also on the issue of healthcare, is that there is a decentralization of 
responsibilities pushed down from central government to uh, local or regional governments, but it doesn't come um, with additional uh, financial resources. Actually, in many cases, we see that in the past 10 years, there had been budget cuts on it. What I also recognize, uh, or what the, the people in these hearings recognize, is that um, in the political debate and in the development of these policies or these larger programs, um, there is a need, because also in the Netherlands we uh, are dealing with a, a multi-party system, there is a need to develop consensus around um, the, 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 the policy or the laws or the plans. And uh, often that consensus also results in unimplementable um, policies, what these people say, because there are, are sometimes to come to a consensus um, conflicting uh, measures or uh, goals are actually included to keep uh, the different parties uh, happy. And finally, what especially comes from um, the people heard from the implementation agencies is that there exists a lack of trust between the ministries and the implementation agencies. And um, that has then resulted in that there is no uh, feedback from the implementation agencies back to the policy makers on, uh, on giving critical feedback on the unimplementability of the uh, policies and plans that are developed at those ministries. When we look at what the people have been mentioning from um, the, uh, the social adoptability side of the question. As, um, so, for example, the, the, uh, the, the, the Ombudsman, uh, Dutch Ombudsman was interviewed as well. Um, and they mentioned that there is, in the policy de uh, development, the policy makers in the Netherlands um, currently very much rely on the um, idea that, that citizens are self-reliant, that um, all citizens are able, human beings who are able to understand the, the content of the plans and policies, and that they are also able to find their ways into this, um, into this policy domain. <clears throat> Rather, what we see, and we've also seen that very much in this um, a child care benefit uh, scandal is that actually many of the people who um, became victim of this in this in this process are actually not fully self-reliant eh? so they are not um, IT literate and that nowadays is quite important if you want to deal with the, the taxations they do not understand the tax forms they don't find their way to um, find um, uh, judicial support right, from lawyers to address this so they become actually a um, victim of the system and these people are often not empowered. What we also recognize in the Netherlands um, in this case is that in many implementation agencies they don't see the client relation as um, the client as the citizen, but actually that the, they rely on their client relation towards the ministries. And because, so the ministries are asking from them, they give the assignment. So they are actually working for the ministry rather than this idea of them being a civil servant uh, and a servant to the people. The um, So... Also, in that case, um, when we think about evaluations and how they report back, it's much more reporting back to those ministries rather than to reporting back to the representatives of um, uh, citizens, which should be uh, parliaments. Another critique that comes uh, from it, and it relates especially to the automatization and IT um, developments in um, in these agencies is that there is actually a loss of tailoring 
to the needs of individuals. And this is, of course, always a, um, a big dilemma between, especially in um, large plants, right, which are uh, generalized uh, to some, some what is defined as a general public. Um, but of course, we see that problems arise, arise in specific parts of the public. Uh, for example, these uh, people of lower uh, socioeconomic classes who are uh, less uh, high, less educated, lower educated, are not really self-reliant. We see that the problems arise in, often in those groups. So, and basically what it man means is that um, uh, these implementation lost their um, human touch. There's no human relation anymore. It's all automized. Um, people are addressed like uh, numbers rather than uh, people. And they will get standard responses from these uh, agencies when things um, go wrong. So what are then uh, some of the suggestions? And I've translated a little bit to our uh, Mota thinking. But um, I saw that uh, quite some people in those hearing actually respond in, in terms that very much fit our, um, our motivations, abilities, but also the implementability, adoptability uh, thinking. So I saw, for example, one of the uh, members of parliament who was really saying straightforward, we need to have uh, feasibility assessments of plans. And, oh, sorry, we need to have feasibility assessments of plans, really focusing on the implementability by agencies uh, of government. And they are actually really proposing that um, Parliament should invite the implementation agencies in the discussions uh, when new policies or programs are developed. So inviting these implementation agencies who in the end, will be responsible for the implementation into the development uh, phases of these policies and plans. And also what they notify, and that's especially also something from uh, a message from the, the Dutch Ombudsman, was that uh, Parliament really should um, move a little bit more away from this idea of people being self-reliant and empowered, and really taking into account the ability of uh, citizens. So I think that um, when the uh, final report um, from this commission comes out, I think more or less some sort of a conclusion like this um, will come forward if I, based on my personal assessment of this hearing. So it shows that it's uh, really meaningful and also um, uh, fitting in the time we are living in that we are thinking really about balancing um, the feasibility of plans in the balancing the implementability of agencies but also and the adoptability of um, citizens. So, well, let's now move on to uh, then thinking about uh, what is evaluation and why, when and how and who is uh, doing it. Well, if I take um, my standard uh, definition, evaluation is the assessment of the object of evaluation. In this case, that can be a policy, a plan, a program, a process, uh, the effect or a result of an empirical observation of a current situation. But it's always based on a systematic acquisition and assessment of information to provide useful feedback about the object. In our case, that would be the plan. Um, but evaluations come in uh, many sorts and uh, many forms. And you would see that there are uh, uh, evaluation frameworks that focus more on the management. And I think uh, the log frame approach, for example, is a, a well-known form of framework for evaluations. But also we have these Gantt charts and these PERT diagrams that are really focusing on management and implementation. But we also have more impact and goal-oriented evaluations like uh, the, uh, the well-known environmental impact um, assessments. But there are also uh, participant stakeholder-oriented evaluation frameworks 
like in the stakeholder analysis and the needs assessment. So all, all these are, of course, um, evaluation frameworks. And you could also argue that um, all decision support systems are somewhat evaluation um, frameworks. <clears throat> Overall, we always say that um, we evaluate to learn. Uh, that's the, the main part of it. But And we learn then to basically improve the uh, uh, plan and if necessary from that evaluation that we compensate and mitigate maybe for undesired effects like in the uh, environmental impact assessments or actually to steer our implementation towards our desired goals. Uh, but another important element of inf uh, evaluations um, is that they are also often part of an accountability process. And uh, that, for example, we see very much now in this um, parliamentary research. Uh, um, in this whole process, already one um, yeah. minister had to step down. So taking his um, democratic um, responsibility for uh, this policy failure. Well, to think then, okay, what is evaluating um, and why are we doing it? But also we need to think, okay, who is evaluating? Well, evaluation, again, because they come in many forms, um, also many um, actors are actually evaluating. We see that research institutes are evaluating by uh, research. Um, we can present some of our more evaluative kinds of research. I think the, um, um, Dr. Kuhn presented last time uh, one of his uh, MOTA research uh, papers, uh, which he wrote together with Doreen Corbet, Leon Hermans and Holland Fee, which is, I think, a typical kind of um, evaluation form of research. Uh, but of course, we also have the government assessment agencies, uh, for example, for the environmental impact assessments. But uh, we also in the Netherlands have the, um, the Environmental Planning Bureau, who is also doing uh, these kind of uh, other assessments of impacts. We can hire external bureaus right, so from the private sector that are doing evaluations. But also internally, when we have uh, project teams or implementation teams, we do internal project evaluations. Overall, we can say we are all evaluating continuously when we reflect on our day-to-day uh, -day activity. So there is also a combination of formal and informal evaluations. When we are looking at how evaluation and evaluation as uh, processes are depicted, and I just ta have taken um, this one from the UNOCD, uh, we always see that this is um, presented somewhat as a um, cycle, and I do think that this relates to also how the, um, the planning process itself is, um, uh, or the policy process is presented as a cycle often. But I, um, this gives an interesting result on how um, evaluation is idealized to evaluate in the whole planning uh, cycle. And also in this picture, I think it gives a nice overview. It re represents what many people would agree upon, that it is in the center. It all turns around to develop a process of continuous learning. And that in the planning cycle, we have certain um, we use certain evaluation tools or decision support tools to develop the plan and to assess the impacts maybe from that in the implementation we have also evaluation tools that monitor the implementation process. Are resources allocated? Are we in progress? Are we managing to realize our goals? And after a while there is a final evaluation or the evaluation of real impacts. And that, of course, the lessons learned need to feed back in new planning cycles. Well, very quickly, when uh, also when you would start uh, reading about um, evaluations, basically we make a distinction between two forms of evaluations, and those are formative evaluations and summative evaluations. 
formative evaluation have the, the goal of improving and strengthening um, a plan. And rather than to, to, uh, to judging it. So if we look at uh, the previous slide again, the, uh, the formative evaluations are really in this phase of the planning. So the needs assessment, the stakeholder analysis, those are all have the, uh, the goal to improve a plan. Uh, the second uh, are the summative evaluation. And summative evaluation really focus on the outcomes and the effects. So a good example and the most familiar example is uh, are the again I think environmental impact assessments, uh, which really focus on the outcomes of um, and the impacts of a plan, but also um, uh, social impact assessments or strategic impact assessments. Um, but also in the end, there might be also a cost benefit analysis uh, to judge the outcome, the desired outcome of these plans. Other terms that um, we uh, hear often um, when we are looking at evaluation is um, ex ante and ex post evaluations. Um, and ex ante is basically, um, it, well, is Latin for before the event and exposed is Latin for after the event. So ex ante evaluations are in the first phase of a whole planning process. So in that phase of planning and decision making and exposed evaluations are when we are judging the outcome of the planning process. So when um, we are in an operational phase. Well, in the implementation phase, of course, we have also interim um, evaluations and there might be a, a final evaluation of um, when the, 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 the project may be related to the plan is uh, delivered. But overall, we also see a continuous monitoring. And I think that's basically the main difference between um, when we think about evaluation and monitoring. Evaluations are often... Um, it's taking a snapshot of a moment or it might look uh, back and monitoring is more this continuous process of uh, keeping an eye on the progress. Well, I took this slide from um, um, from uh, Kuhn in his uh, in the webinar one and he uh, uh, presented this process as well as planning implementation and adoption and I think adoption can easily be uh, replaced in this part as um, the operational phase. Um, so and he, he mentioned that well professionals tell us what we what should be done, authorities decide what can be done and social communities um, need to adopt what they want and do and let's now look at how this uh, relates to evaluation. So when we look in the planning, and then in terms, they, these are ex ante formative or summative evaluation, what we see in the planning, these are mostly based on uh, science-based models. And um, expert judgments. When, and they make assumptions about the impact of the plan on the future. During implementation, we see that traditionally most of the, the, the evaluation frameworks are then uh, management oriented. And so they really focus on the allocation of um, resources, the progress in time. Um, so, and are we um, to on track to realizing our goals? And in that adoption phase, we see evaluations that are actually based on real experience and observations. Uh, we see a lot of um, case studies uh, going on here. They can be both qualitative and quantitative analysis, but they need to be feeding back on um, how well the plan was implemented, how well they achieved their goals, and then give recommendations towards new planning processes.
Just to um, get a little bit aware again on the, the MOTA framework, um, um, already mentioned by um, triggers and um, perceived opportunities, threats, motivations, abilities, and um, the actions. So the interesting part, of course, of the, the, the MOTA um, thinking here is how um, to really think about what is the ability of um, implementing agencies, but also other governmental actors, but also the ability of society to adopt and implement a plan. And I think these are valuable and how that influences action. And I think these are um, uh, valuable uh, elements also to think about when we are thinking about um, evaluation. So MOTA originally, uh, it is presented as a decision support tool, but that also means that it's actually an ex ante formative evaluation framework because it helps us in assessing the implementability and adoptability of different kinds of uh, measures, of different actions. And in that sense, we can put different actions next to each other and can assess what is our most desired kinds of action to uh, move forward. What's the most feasible to implement? Yeah, and uh, again, I, uh, this is uh, from a slide from, uh, from Quan. Um, so it helps us next to these other performance-based, to the more summative um, um, evaluation tool. So next to assessing the performance that we are also assessing the adoptability and implementability. The, uh, the tools that we then uh, have for that in the MOTA framework is this MOTA mapping, which has been pre presented to us. And in the MOTA mapping, we can mostly try to see where is actually and to develop then maybe strategies as well to get the actors in the high abilities and high supporters range. And so for that sake, it's also um, just like in environmental impact assessments, a way to assess how can we not, in this case, mitigate and compensate, but how, what kind of strategies can we develop to move towards this upper right uh, quartal of the, the MOTA map? So it is a way actually to for planners to, to go back to the drawing board and to see if they can mitigate and compensate um, for the undesired impact. And in this case, the undesired impact would be that you uh, develop a great plan, uh, which is not implementable by agencies or not yeah. adoptable by uh, local uh, stakeholders. And the FITS, the, the adoptability framework, so the financial uh, abilities, institutional abilities, technical abilities, and social abilities, are then um, a good structuring of how to move forward. In, during monitoring, um, normally it's always about work breakdown, log frames. It's really focusing on controlling the project. But as uh, Fee already mentioned in his previous talk, um, especially when we talk about, in, about strategic plans, also a lot remains open. We know goals, but we often do not really know um, how to do it. So I think more recent kind of um, um, implementation management uh, frameworks like Agile and Scrum, but there are many uh, others with all their own critique are interesting to think about. And um, so what are the must have, what are the nice haves? And always be aware. And again, here, MOTA can also come into uh, play if we are needing to do less on uh, time or if costs are reduced, it will have an impact on the scope, what we can do and the quality that we can do. So finally, so if we are um, 
assessing and learning. So we're using MOTA as an ex post summative evaluation. So as a final evaluation of the impact of um, our programs. Then the goal is, of course, to do learn from the implementation and to improve future um, planning. And the most important part of this then is that um, we need to stop thinking, I think, in the uh, planning process as being separate boxes of planning, implementation and adoption. Um, what we need to do is to integrate further. And therefore, if we really want to develop uh, learning communities or evaluation communities, we need to start to think about integrating these phases of planning, implementation and uh, the operational phase, just like the, uh, one of the messages in the Dutch hearing that we, in the planning, we need to invite implementation agencies on the implementability. We need to invite citizens' representations, representatives about the adoption and together create a learning uh, community around uh, the implementation, the development, implementation and operation of our plans. So, that makes our planning a little bit more complex because we uh, are going to invite more people, uh, but it also means that we uh, need to think more in uh, interdisciplinary or maybe transdisciplinary terms. So it requires multiple knowledges relating to the performance, implementability and adoptability, and so does evaluation. Um, and this is necessary because we know that complex problems are not solved by silver bullets. And therefore, it requires experimentation in implementation. So evaluations become even more important if so to, to control and to monitor if you are actually realizing your goals and trying new things and steering by. And for that sake, a continuous monitoring via MOTA maps can help to steer um, towards the desired uh, outcomes. Well, some final things, of course, in evaluation, it needs to create um, trust. And therefore, I think also truth seeking is important. So coming at common grounds of what are the facts uh, in these implementation processes, but also to be pragmatic. So really to learn from what works in practice and let those kinds of lessons influence um, not only um, the planning itself, but also the implementation. Be reflexive and self-critical. Um, in, in Netherlands, we have the expression, the butcher who um, evaluates his own meat, well, which is undesired. So um, it's very important that there's always um, a critical self-awareness. And of course, evaluations need to be ethical and transparent. So also about sharing. Again, this relates to uh, trust building. And if we can build trust and learning communities, I think the um, MOTA framework uh, can support very much because it forces planners to think in terms of implementability and adoptability, which actually supports participatory approaches to planning because it forces really to take into account the, implement the implementing agencies, but also citizens and other stakeholders like the business communities and it helps us from, to integrate these people in the beginning from the planning process into monitoring and the operational phase to really learn around water and environmental issues. Thank you very much. I think it took a bit uh, long. My apologies for that, but I hope you find it interesting. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. It, it for sure was very interesting. There's also a lot of... Uh, uh, activity in the chat uh, on that. Um, I think that what I would like to suggest, if you are okay with that, is that uh, you have a look at the questions and maybe uh, pick one out of them, and then we move to the next presentation and we can pick up with the, with the other questions and debate after. But I would like to uh, assure that Michel also uh, still can have his full talk. Is that okay for you, Jaap? Yes, that's um, fine. Um, so I think some of the questions they were arising as you were speaking, you you kind of answered 
quite a, a bit of them. Yeah, um, so, yeah I think the, um, so the, uh, both Leon and um, uh, Thi talk a bit about the adaptation pathways. And I think um, indeed this is a very interesting um, uh, part and um, also an interesting thinking. And I think that idea of adaptation pathways where you said um, in adaptation pathways, you said how the, the, the context of a um, around an issue is changing as your criteria to make uh, decisions around what to do next. And I think for um, adaptability in implementation processes, this is also very important, but in that sense, you could also use um, goals as your criteria uh, to change uh, your behavior. And uh, goals are then, of course, not the implementation of an action itself, but the goal is, of course, the desired effect of that, um, of that action. So the decision should always be about changing actions in order to come to um, the desired goals. And I think that um, adaptive pathway thinking is very helpful also in using next to um, and using a, a MOTA adaptive pathway, for example, in order to uh, make decisions and in changing. Um, 